Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to install macOS Monterey on your older unsupported Mac with Open Core Legacy Patcher. This is going to allow you to install newer applications, unlock features like Universal Control and AirPlay, plus install the latest security updates to keep your Mac secure. This is going to be an update to my previous video that's going to include all the changes and improvements to the Open Core Legacy Patcher app that will make your installation a lot easier. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. The patcher is constantly changing, so I always put an update section in the description of this video to be able to keep you updated with the latest changes to Open Core Legacy Patcher and Mac OS Monterey. So check this section first before you get started, just to make sure there's no updates. I also keep a detailed chapter section, so if you need to go back to a certain part, you can just click on one of these timestamps to bring you right to that section. Let's go over some important notes before we get started with the installation process. First of all, there's been so many improvements and changes to the Open Core Legacy Patcher app since my last video. So if you use that to install Big Sur or Monterey on your Mac, you can use this video now to be updated with all of the improvements to the installation process. Now the next part is, is that I want to make sure that you back up all your data before we begin. We're going to show an upgrade and a clean installation, but just in case something goes wrong, I want you to be able to have a backup of your data. I recommend two sources. So if one source goes bad, you still have a backup of that. And that has happened. But again, for a very small percentage of people, just back up your data so you're safe. The next thing is, is that this is a patcher that is used to install an unsupported operating system on your older Mac. And this is unsupported by Apple. But on the other hand, Apple has already said that your Mac is unsupported and obsolete by them, and they stopped sending security updates to your Mac long ago. So when we do this, some would argue that you're keeping your Mac more secure because you're getting the latest Mac OS Monterey security updates than being on El Capitan or Sierra and not getting any security updates at all, and you're open to attack from any older security vulnerability. This is an open source software. So if you have any questions like, wait, what am I installing? on my Mac. The installation here is stored on GitHub, which is an open source hub that has every single file and process and script available for you to look at so you can see for yourself what you're using to install. So the next section here is that, like I mentioned earlier, check the update section in the description of this video for the latest updates in case there's any changes and there's detailed chapters that you can jump to. Plus, I also recommend that when we do this process that we do a fresh erase and install is recommended. And what I mean by that is I said we could do an upgrade, which means that if you have High Sierra, you can upgrade. That does work and you can try it out, but I've seen so much more success with a fresh, clean installation. So as long as you have your files backed up, you can put them back on the system when you come back up. Next section is here. If you have any questions, always use the comment section. I can jump in and help or other users can jump in and help you. Plus, make sure that you subscribe to my channel because I cover all of the Open Core Legacy Patcher updates. So when a new update comes out, I do a video on it and I test it and make sure that you're informed of all the latest changes in that update. Make sure that we know here that the ultimate official guide is the Open Core Legacy Patcher Guide. And that is available on the Open Core Legacy Patcher page when you click Getting Started. This is the guide written by McCullough, who is the developer of Open Core Legacy Patcher. And this is the Bible of installing Open Core Legacy Patcher on your unsupported Mac. Now that we have that set, let's go over some equipment that you're going to need to perform this action. First of all, you need an unsupported Mac from 2008 to 2015 is supported. And I've got a link down here and in the description that shows a full list of supported machines. The recommended hardware that you have in your Mac is an SSD hard drive and eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, you can have a old spinning mechanical hard drive on there and be fine, but the experience I, I'm telling you right now is not gonna be the same in, if you don't upgrade to an SSD. Because I've tested it myself and it's slow. It's not the patcher, it's the fact that you're running off a very older mechanical hard drive. Now, the same thing with RAM. I've got plenty of unsupported Macs with four gigabytes of RAM and it runs. But if you want a good experience, I recommend eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, the next thing you're gonna need is a USB flash drive. I recommend 16 gigabytes or larger or an external hard drive is also fine. I also recommend using a USB 3.0 or faster so you can get fast read and write speeds for the installation. I also recommend that you keep that USB drive on hand just in case you need it in the future to be able to do any troubleshooting. I also keep a list of important links you may need to look at here, plus a link, like I mentioned earlier, to all of the supported models. 
Okay, let's get started with our walkthrough here. The demonstration Mac that I'm using today is a mid-2010 Mac Mini running Mac OS High Sierra 10.13.6. It has 8 gigabytes of RAM, and I updated the hard drive to an SSD drive, so it's the perfect example of a machine that's ready to go to Mac OS Monterey. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is download the Open Core Legacy Patcher software, so we can open up Safari and navigate to the Open Core Legacy Patcher page, which I'll put a link in the description, and above in the upper right-hand corner. We can click on the GitHub to go to the open source page page to be able to download the software. We'll scroll down here to the release section on the right hand side. This will always show the latest release. Click on this section here and then we can scroll down. These are the patch notes that talk about all the changes in the release. You can also click down here to look at the change log but the asset section is where you want to be able to go. There's only one file you need here. OpenCore-Patcher GUI app.zip. Click on this and it'll start to download right into your downloads folder here. Once it's done downloading, you'll see it jump up and down, down here, and we'll be able to drag it right from our downloads folder to our applications folder. So it jumped up and down, we can click on Finder here, and then we can click on Applications on the left-hand side, and we can click our downloads folder again, and drag the Open Core Patcher right into the applications folder. And there it is. Now we're ready to open up Open Core Legacy Patcher for the first time. So all you need to do is double click on it. It's got to verify real quick and we want to be able to open it. All right, we've got the patcher open and ready to go. The next thing we're going to need to do is prepare our USB drive. Okay, now that we have our Open Core Legacy Patcher application installed and open, we want to be able to download Mac OS Monterey and create our installer USB, our flash drive. So let's plug that in now, and it should pop up over here on the right-hand side. And there it is. The newer versions of Open Core Legacy Patcher can actually erase and format USB drives to prepare them for the Mac OS Monterey installer. But let's erase it properly just to make sure it's ready to go and we don't have any issues. So we'll open up Disk Utility, which is located in the Applications Utilities folder. And then once we're open here, we want to go up to View and then click Show All Devices. We want to concentrate only on the external. This is your internal hard drive. You don't want to touch anything up here. Only go to external. And you'll see this is the top level drive and then this is the volume so we want to click on the top level drive here and then click erase we want to be able to see three sections here if we only see name and format that means that you clicked on here and that means that if the scheme is master boot record or something we could have problems with the patcher so we want to make sure that the scheme is guid the format is mac os extended journal and you can leave the name whatever you want and then before we erase Make sure that all the data is off of your USB if you are using it for something else. The entire USB has to be erased to prepare the installer. So once we're clear on that, let's click on Erase. Okay, it's ready to go. And if you get a time machine pop-up, just click Don't Use. And we'll click on the Done button, and we can close out Disk Utility. We're ready to go through the application to download the installer. So all we need to do is click on the application here and click on Create Mac OS Installer. What we get here is two options. If you already have the installer, you can click on Existing Mac OS Installer. But if you don't have the installer, click on Download Mac OS Installer. It's going to download the catalog directly from Apple and see all the versions of Mac OS that are available. Now what it's going to show you here is Mac OS Big Sur. That's 11, Mac OS Monterey, which is 12, and you might even see in the future Mac OS 13, which will be Ventura. You might notice that there's two versions of Mac OS Monterey. Usually there's only one. The version that you want, you want to be able to see, is if you're not sure, you can always go to my Mac OS Monterey full installers list, and you can scroll down to see what the latest version is and the date. And you can see I have both versions listed here, and you can see that one is only for the MacBook Air and the new MacBook Pro 2022. So we know we need 21 f 79 so we go back and we see 21 f 79 that's what we need but again we should only see one version to make it really simple we'll click on that and it's going to immediately start to download directly from apple servers this installation of mac os is not modified at all it's to get downloaded directly from apple and it is a default installer Okay, the download of macOS Monterey is completed and we're at the next section now. We want to be able to use Create Install Media to install macOS Monterey to our external USB drive that we already erased and prepared so we didn't have any problems at this step. So now it's saying the selected USB will be erased. Please back up your data. We already did that earlier. And we want to be able to select the disk. And that is our disk here. We have a 320 gigabyte drive. We're going to click that here. And now is we need to type in our administrator password here. 
now it ejected the volume to be able to prepare it and now it's writing to disk. Now what's nice about this is it actually gives your bytes written and you can also open up activity monitor to see how fast it's actually writing. And then click on disk here and you can actually see the read and write speeds of the actual installer writing to the USB drive. As you can see here, we're reading at about 48 megabytes a second. And now look, it's already erased the drive here and renamed it install macOS monitoring. We can move the window to watch the progress here. We will take a little break here and come back when the installer is done writing. Okay, great. The creating installer part is complete. It says successfully created the macOS installer. Would you like to continue and install open core to this disk? And yes, we do. And this is the second part of it. So let's click install open core to disk. Now what it's going to do next, and I'm going to move this to the side so you can see what's going on here. The step to create the open core configuration for our Mac mini four kind of one is complete. It took all those default settings that needed to set up and put them in a temporary location called the build folder. As you can see over here, it says finish the building of your open core configuration. Would you like to install open core to your USB drive now? Yes, we would. So let's click on install to disk. And it's loading the USB drive here and it says select a disk to install open core. And we also know that if you have one hard drive internally, it's always labeled disk zero. So you don't want to install it to your internal hard drive. Now you want to install it to a USB drive that is usually always disk two. Plus remember it was 320 gigabytes from before. So we know that it's our drive. So we want to click on a USB drive here and we want to create an EFI partition. Click on this button right here. And now we need our administrator password. We'll type that in now. And we'll see the EFI partition of the USB drive mount here, install those files to it and unmount it. Now it says reboot to apply. Open core is finished installing to your USB disk. You need to reboot and hold on the option key and select open core boot EFI option. Would you like to reboot now? We're ready to continue on to the next step of the installation here. So all we need to do is click on reboot and we want to be able to hold down the option key on our keyboard so we can get to the boot selection screen. So we'll get ready to hold on the option option key, or if you have a Windows keyboard, it'll be the Alt key. We'll hold on Option and click on Reboot and click on Restart. Hold on Option key and keep holding it until you hear the chime and then you see the boot selection screen with the hard drive and the USB layouts. There's our chime. There's our screen. We'll give it a second here. Keep holding Option. Once you see the screen, you continue holding down option and then you want to use your arrow key to move over to EFI boot or use your mouse to move over to EFI boot and then click the arrow button. And while you're still holding down option, now you can click on install Mac OS Monterey and hit enter. And now we're booting off the USB to the Mac OS Monterey installer and we'll give it a second here and we'll be in recovery. Okay, we're in Mac OS recovery. This is where we gotta decide which kind of an installation we would like to do. If you would like to attempt an upgrade, it's very simple. What that means is you are going to install Mac OS Monterey over the top of our High Sierra installation. And then all your files and all of your applications will still be there when it's done. But again, like I said, I recommend doing an erase install so we get a really nice fresh installation so you can see how well Mac OS Monterey runs. But let's first show you how to do the upgrade. And then in this next section right after, I'll show you how to just go back to the screen and we'll do a disk utility full erase and installation. So to do an upgrade, all we need to do is click on install Mac OS Monterey right here from the main screen. Click continue and then click on continue again and then agree and agree again. And this is it. All you need to do is start the upgrade is hit Macintosh hard drive and then click on continue and the upgrade will start. When you're done, you'll be at the login window. You can type in your password and you'll be right to the desktop. But for this next part, we're going to step back and then show you how to do a fresh erase and install of Mac OS Monterey. In this section, I'm going to show you how to do an erase and install of a fresh installation of Mac OS Monterey. So before I showed you how to do an upgrade in the previous section, in this section, we're going to go into disk utility to erase the entire drive. So we're going to click on continue. And now remember, this is a final warning. If you didn't back up your data first, you can always reboot back into the operating system to back up your data because we're going to be erasing the entire drive and all of the data on your internal hard drive. So this is your last fair warning to back up your data first before we erase the entire drive. Now all we have to do is click on Macintosh hard drive over here and click on erase. 
Now really quickly here, if you're coming from Mac OS Mojave and lower, you will only have Macintosh hard drive. If you're coming from Mac OS Catalina, you might see Macintosh hard drive and Macintosh hard drive data, and it will ask you to erase the volume group. Click erase the volume group if you see that option. But since we're coming from High Sierra, we only have Macintosh hard drive only, so we will click on erase. The erase process is complete, click done. Now as we see here, all we have is just Macintosh hard drive and it is completely empty and we're ready for the installation. So let's click on Disk Utility here and quit. And then we will go to Install Mac OS Monterey. Click on Continue. Continue again and then agree and agree it again here. And now we can click the empty Macintosh hard drive for a fresh installation. Click on Continue and there it goes. It's going to copy the installation files to disk, reboot, and then do the actual installation to hard drive. So we'll let this go and you don't need to do anything. The drive will auto select on its own. And by the time we're done, we'll be at the setup assistant window and we'll be ready to walk through the setup assistant to create a new user. We'll give it a second here and we'll pick up in a little bit. Okay, the Mac Mini just rebooted. We saw the boot selection screen with the install Mac OS Monterey and then the Mac OS Monterey USB installer, but we did not have to click anything. It automatically clicked the installer and continued on to the installation part. Now we're set at 29 minutes. It's going to install Mac OS Monterey onto the internal hard drive. And when we're done, we might reboot once or twice and then we will be at the setup assistant window to create a new user. And we'll pick up right there when this is done. Okay, we're at less than a minute remaining and we're almost ready to reboot. We've rebooted here and we've got the main screen and we'll give it a second here and we'll see the boot selector. Okay, we're rebooted here, we're back at the screen again. We'll see the boot selector here. And this time we see Macintosh hard drive selected. Now it's gonna boot into Mac OS Monterey, not the installer anymore because that part is done. And again, you did not have to click anything all of these parts here are automatic. We reboot it again here, give it a second. And we see Macintosh hard drive again. Okay, this is the part that I wanted to highlight. This part here is the final part. You'll see a zero to 100% completed. This is actually installing the new automatic patcher for the graphics acceleration patch if it is needed on your Mac. Once this is complete, and it gets to the setup assistant window. If your Mac model needed the graphics acceleration packages to be installed, it will automatically be installed. And when you go through the setup assistant, it will be a lot smoother. In previous versions of Open Core Legacy Patcher, this wasn't done. So when you got to the setup assistant, it would be really slow and clunky because the drivers for the graphics acceleration were not installed and it was a bad experience. Okay, that just finished here. We're loading into the setup assistant here. All right, here we are. Select your country or region. Click on continue. And one thing we notice right off the bat is like I mentioned earlier, the graphics acceleration package was already installed for this machine and we can click through the setup assistant windows with no lag or clicking on the button and waiting five seconds. Look how smooth this is. This was a really great improvement to the Open Core Legacy Patcher installation process. So I'm gonna click through these menus and we'll be on the desktop in no time and we'll pick up after that. Okay, the desktop's loading. We just finished through the setup assistant menus here. We'll give it a second to load the desktop. Okay, here's at the login window. We'll click on our user account here and type in our password. All right, we're on the desktop and we can see our USB is still plugged in. We want to keep that plugged in for now because we're not done yet. And we can also go up here to Finder and click on Preferences and click on Hard Disks. And then we can see our Macintosh hard drive. We can sort view sort by name. So this is one of the new parts of the patcher and this is what I was waiting for. This new pop-up has done a quick check and this is what it says. Open Core Legacy Patcher has detected that you are booting Open Core from a USB or external drive. If you would like to boot your Mac normally without a USB drive plugged in, you can install Open Core to the internal hard drive. Would you like to launch Open Core Legacy Patcher and install to disk? Now, this was a big problem before, and what that means is, is that users would unplug the USB drive before or 
they would leave it in and then forget to install to the internal hard drive the bootloader. So then they would say, well, I always have to leave my USB drive in to boot Monterey every time. Or I unplug my drive and now I'm getting the prohibited sign when Monterey tries to boot. This is the reason. Because once you get back into the operating system, you need to install the bootloader onto the internal drive. So then you can unplug your USB and it will boot to that drive internally every time without the USB. So let's do that now. Let's click on OK. It's going to start OpenCore Legacy Patcher and immediately start to build the configuration just like we saw before for our USB. But now it's building this configuration for installing on our internal hard drive to be able to boot off of. So this is all done now here and installed to that temporary folder location just like we saw before. Now it says the installation and the configuration for OpenCore Legacy Patcher is finished. And would you like to install the OpenCore configuration to disk now? Yes, we do. And click install to disk. Now it's loading disks. Now what's also nice here is that there's a new option in OpenCore Legacy Patcher that shows you which disk that you're booted off of. Because you might look at this, well, wait a minute, which am I going to install? We knew before that, remember when I said disk zero was always your usually your internal hard drive, and anything higher than that would be a USB or an external hard drive. So this is your internal drive, and look how the blue is your USB drive, because that's showing you which one we are booted off of now, and that is USB drive. We are going to install the configuration now to our internal hard drive, so we will click that now. And then we want to select the EFI. Now it's going to mount that, but we need to enter in our administrator password first. You see that it mounts the internal hard drive EFI partition, installs the boot loader to it, and then it will eject that drive and it'll be ready to boot off of. And there it is, it ejected. Now it says reboot to apply. Open Core has finished installing to disk. You will need to reboot and hold down the option key to select Open Core Boot to the EFI option. Would you like to do that now? Yes, we do. So let's click on reboot. Let's click on restart, and as soon as we hit restart, we can unplug our USB drive, but we also have to hold down the option key immediately. I'm holding down option key now. We heard the chime, continue holding, and there's our boot selection screen. We can see the internal hard drive and our EFI boot. I'm still holding down option. I'm going to click on the control key and watch it turn to a circle that's setting the default boot disk. I'm going to hit enter and still hold down option. We're going to get to the next screen and then we can click on Macintosh hard drive and it's going to boot Mac OS Monterey every time now when we boot. Okay, we'll log back in. And you'll know right away when you see the translucent password text that the graphics acceleration packages were automatically installed and that worked perfectly with the automatic patching system with a fresh installation. To get to the OpenCore Legacy Patcher application, all we need to do is click on Finder or Macintosh hard drive here and we'll open up Applications. And there's our OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Double click on it to open it up. Now we see at the main menu here, and what we're going to do is make a change to that open core configuration that we just created earlier. So all we need to do is go into settings, and we can see that show boot picker is selected. We are going to unselect that option, go back to the main menu, and then click build and install that configuration that we just set those new settings to. It's automatically going to build that configuration setting without the boot picker selection setting. And then we will click install to disk. And now we're only going to have one option now because we removed the USB and you can see that it's highlighted disk zero, the internal hard drive. We're going to click that and then we're going to click the EFI. And we'll type in our administrator password here. And that's it. Hit reboot. There's a chime or at our boot screen now. There it is. There's our loading screen. We do not see the boot picker screen anymore. And again, if that, if you didn't bother you, you can just leave it as is, but this is a way to remove that. So it boots up when you hit the power button and boots right into Mac OS Monterey like a native device. Okay, we'll log back in here. Okay, now that we're back in the desktop, I wanted to talk about that flashing that you might have seen when I was clicking around with the menu bar system. You'll notice now that this is not happening anymore when I'm going through the menu system. And the reason behind that is a brand new non-metal option called Beta Blur that fixes that. So let's take a quick look at that. Let's go back into Finder and let's open up OpenCore Legacy Patcher and take a look at that setting. 
And that setting is now on by default because it is now production ready. So to look at that setting, we can go into settings and then click on non-metal settings. And then we can see that enable beta blur is automatically on. And again, when that's off and you click on the menu bar system, you'll see some flashing squares or some discoloration. And that's been all fixed by the non-metal developers who were able to put together that fix, which is really nice. If you want to be able to turn that off or turn on dark menu bar, which is basically if you are running a light mode and you have the light Monterey background and you would, would like to see this in a black text, you can click on dark menu bar and beta rim is on any kind of a menu system like system preferences that had a black trim around it that's that setting here too again anytime you change a setting in here you have to click on return settings log out log back in and that'll set that setting so now the next thing we want to talk about now that we're back in and everything is running okay i wanted to mention what i was talking about earlier with non-metal and metal what metal means is, is that the graphics cards from 2012 our newer macs have what is called metal compatibility and apple switched this in mac os mojave to have metal support built in that's why a lot of models were dropped off for mac os mojave support but for example if you had a mac pro and you installed a metal compatible graphics card you can install mojave and then be full compatible but for older macs we can still get monterey to run by installing graphics acceleration drivers so let's take a look at that when you're in open car legacy patcher and you would like to know which drivers are actually being installed all you need to do is click post install root patch here once you click on that it's automatically going to look at the version of Mac that you have and see what is needed and you can see here right away that I need Nvidia Tesla drivers to be able to get my graphics acceleration on this 2010 Mac mini to work properly if you see no patches are needed Mac OS Monterey has the drivers that it needs installed Mac OS Monterey actually had a lot of the legacy drivers removed so a lot of the models have to install the graphic acceleration patches and you'll see them right here in the list you might see for example keyboard backlight that fixes the backlight or you might see legacy Wi-Fi that's because Apple removed the Wi-Fi drivers from Mac OS Monterey and they had to be added back through the patcher this gives you an idea if you need the patches for your Mac or you don't and the beauty of it is is that you don't normally have to worry about this at all and there's also a nice new section in here that tells you when when the root patches were installed on the system and that's today's date June 20th and using 0.4.7 so we can return back to the main menu here and that's the post install root patch now if you go back into these settings here there's some other things that you can kind of set in here if you want but most likely you're not going to be needed to go in here for at all the only thing that you really need to do with the latest version with all the improvements is is if you want to install a mac os monterey update and i'll show you that next now let's talk about Mac OS Monterey software updates. To install a software update, all you need to do is go into system preferences here and then click on software update and you can install them natively right through software update. Now to get more information, all you need to do is click on more info down here and it'll show you about the update and you can just click install now. It'll download directly from Apple, reboot, install the update, and then come right back into the operating system. Now, once it comes back up, the automatic Open Core Legacy Patcher new root patching system will automatically check and see if you need to install the root patches again. And here's the message that you're gonna get when the patcher checks right when the update is finished. It's going to say Open Core Legacy Patcher has detected that you're running without root patches. Mac OS wipes all root patches during OS installs and updates, so they need to be reinstalled. The following patches have been detected on your system and it'll tell you the list of the ones that you need would you like to apply these patches now and you can click on ok and they'll automatically install so you don't even have to start up the open core legacy patcher app to be able to run and patch your system after or worry about any of those things open core legacy patcher will tell you now if you need to install them when an update is finished and that's going to help so much because there's been so many people who have said hey i've installed a software update and my system's really slow this is going to take care of that so when you see this message make sure you click on ok and then you're system be good as new until the next time you install a software update 
Now let's talk about troubleshooting issues. If you have any issues with the patcher, make sure you check the official guide. There's a really nice document here that talks about working around legacy acceleration issues, for example, non-metal max. And there's also a troubleshooting section down here that you can go over where if you have any issues with installation, boot up problems. For example, there's a really well-known one where you get a black screen if you have a 2013 or 2014 MacBook Pro 11,3. After you install Mac OS Monitor and it comes back up, it can can't switch over to the internal GPU and gives you a black screen. So you're like, what's wrong with this? If you read this section here, it'll tell you all you need to do is boot it up into safe mode and hold on shift and then install the patches and then reboot and the system will be okay. But that's a perfect example. All these issues that are documented here and have really nice walkthrough fixes. I also put a big thank you out there to all of the open core legacy patcher developers who put together this amazing open source software to help people extend the life of their Mac to keep them out of the garbage dump and save them money. These Macs are still useful and this software unlocks that power long after Apple has called them obsolete. And that's my open core legacy patcher Mac OS Monterey update video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the installation went okay for you. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up or a share. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And I want to thank all my viewers and especially all my Patreon members. You guys are absolutely awesome and I really appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.